Hello, this is Patrick with New Jersey's Outdoor Adventures YouTube channel. I'm here on a road trip and I bumped into Kurt and Kurt has a really cool DIY camper conversion. He's going to give us a tour today. Hello, Kurt, and welcome to New Jersey Outdoor Adventures. Hi, I'm Kurt and I'd like to take you on a tour of my cargo conversion trailer. This is, um, we used to use this trailer for uh, hauling motorcycles and lawnmowers. We used to race lawnmowers and we stopped and then I changed it into a conversion trailer so that wife and I can travel. We're going to take off and go uh, travel to US for about a year. And so this is what we're going to do with him. So we'll start right here at the door. And this is an ottoman that you lift up and it holds shoes, dirty laundry, whatever you want to put in it. It's just made of as everything in this trailer is really just two by twos and um, quarter inch uh, maple plywood. And then it's quarter inch oak plywood that I just ripped down to make it look like one by fours. And the fabric I bought at um, uh, Walmart and the cushion is from Home Depot, just off the shelf materials. And then around the side here, this is our uh, dining room table we sit to eat at it just folds down like that and then it folds back up these clips hold it in and this is our murphy bed and to set that up i take my cushions i put down here i slide this ottoman over a little bit this one here i haven't stained yet but this just comes out goes up the top and then this folds down and rests on the couch and the ottoman. This is three quarter inch uh, maple plywood. This mattress we got from Home Goods in Frederick, Maryland. This just folds down. Sorry for the mess, it's got sheets, but we keep all of our blankets, pillows, stuff like that in here. I made all these um, shelves just to put, just to store stuff when you put your, make your bed. Um, this this plastic backing I got from Home Depot it was wasn't selling. They were just trying to get rid of it. And then we have a TV. Actually, we bought from a truck stop, and it, I just have Velcro holding it. And then if I needed a different angle, I just use the Velcro and just put it in different angles like that. When I'm not using it, we just put it back up. There was um. A time I actually had it on this door on these hinges so that we could open it up and we could watch it outside but the wife said I want to watch it while we're laying in bed and then I have a screen that actually goes over this door as well so we can let the air in if it's, if it's nice out and to put it back you just put this mattress up first kind of sits like that this just folds up goes under the light Folds up right up underneath the there. Just comes back down. When we travel, we're going to take a motorcycle with us. So this uh, clip is for the uh, handlebars with the strap. This flips up where the front tire would go. And then underneath your leg right there, the one on the floor is the other one to hold the motorcycle in place. Hold the motorcycle in place. So this couch, before these put these back on, this has a, a friend of mine gave me a, a, a pop-up trailer that was, the roof was, um rotten but a lot of the stuff inside was still good so this this heater came out of it we have propane on the front but you lift this up and this is the um the propane heater this panel i cut out for from this window and i can put this air conditioner i put that panel in the window take the screen out push the window all the way up put that panel in and then i can set that air conditioner inside there and I have an outlet up underneath here. This outlet goes to a 2500 watt inverter that's powered right here. I turn it on and off right here. I have two 200 amp hour Ames Power Lithium Life PO4. Basically all this stuff in here, I, I bought Will Prouse's book and just kind of went off with his what, what he said in there with uh, gauge wire gauges and fuses and that kind of stuff. This this red inverter is a, a thousand watt um, Best Tech, I think it is, and that powers uh, two freezers. That uh, this one we kept as a freezer, 
and this one I made into a refrigerator and I just have a, a, a sensor in here that turns it on and off turns the power on and off I have it set for I think 34 degrees um, to go off and 40 to come on something like that but they're the, the freezers are, are better insulated than the refrigerator so that's why we went with two um, freezers and another nice thing is they have this little lock you turn so when you're going down the road the doors will open on both of those the ceiling is um, maple quarter inch maple ply and then I got quarter inch oak ply that I, I routed out and stuck LED uh, sticky tape lights in and they work off of uh, dimmers I have under, underneath it, this um, cabinet so we can, if it's nighttime we can dim them down low or we can turn them up bright in the sun and during the day and, and above the uh, quarter inch maple ply I have two inches of poly iso that you get at Home Depot or um, Home Depot or Lowe's this is a, a max air fan that does an awesome job it's quiet 10 speeds opens automatically I keep the the controls for it here this is the controls for the air conditioner this is the controls for the TV I just something velcroed on the wave keeps all of her stuff in there if you want to take a look I have um these are child safety locks that you put them like that and they'll keep the doors closed and then they have a magnet that you put click it and it it pulls that little thing down so you can get them open or you can just flip them like this and they're open all the time for heat we have controls for it flipping one and off and I also have another uh, don't ask me which one is now because I, I gotta use some p-touch and label these to what they are this one is for the sink um, pump I'm not exactly sure this one is for a light down there one's for the ceiling fan I gotta go through them again that's kind of <laughs> sad of course it tells you your your voltage of your batteries this is a nice little setup with USB plugs and then a cigarette lighter plug as well this is for the solar controllers down underneath like this again this is I got off of Will's out of Will's book and this one here is a little bit more specific it shows you a little better what's actually in your batteries these counters I made are um, this trailer I, I was worried about weight so I didn't want it to go over so these are just doors um, hollow cord Luan doors that had stained and, and put in here so if you they're, they're hollow if you listen to them the the, the, the doors are solid um, oak and I think it's I'm not exactly sure what stain it is to be honest with you but this is solid oak this is quarter inch maple and I just routed it I mean um, dadoed it out and stuck the panel in there and just used Craig jig um, screws and that actually worked pretty good because you would think that the trailers are square but w and there I guess they are to a point but once you start putting things in they start getting a little tweaky and because of that I don't know if you can kind of if you look down here you can kind of see this is like a little bit of an angle but you can loosen that up put a little shim in there and then you can get them so that they're they're nice and, and flush <laughs> if that makes any sense anybody who's worked in the cabinet tray knows the floor is original um three quarter inch plywood that I just sanded down and have like three or four coats of um polyurethane on it and just left it like that and it, it sweeps and cleans up pretty good these drawers are I had used to work at a place and I salvaged um, the slides full extension ball bearing slides um, I made them all myself and I started with a three quarter inch and then I was like anything else I try to save room or maximize room so this is this quarter inch maple and then I just made things that you can put them in there so that one holds all the utensils this one holds the wife's got cutting boards and different stuff for and then on this bottom one we have trash you can see I haven't cleaned up in there this bottom one here is for our induction top and then we have uh, a uh, the um, butane I think it is stowed down there this is for straight out of IKEA for I think it was like 50 bucks or something like that I didn't put any slides on this one I just used um, the like the felt that you put on like bottom of chairs to keep from scratching floors and I just have it sliding on that and, and it seems to do a pretty good job it doesn't bounce out when we're coming down the road so I've left well enough alone this here is a Berkey water filter because 
you never know what you're going to get on the road <laughs> on the road so we just fill that up and that's what we drink it and we she puts it in in a, in a glass bottle the this uh, spice rack i made for the wife a long time ago but it was actually for the, for her to hold dishes on and then when we decided to go on the road i cut it down and made it into a spice rack for her this is um backsplash material i think we got it at lowe's some people use you know there's all kind of different things you can use this we got from amazon as you can see these magnets they don't want to stay in one so be careful what brand you buy but this is just another space saving uh thing we use it up hides things out of the way these upper cabinets are made of the same thing two by twos we just have um some either you can use a hat racks or keychains and then in, this is just a cigarette lighter when i stop I, I, I drilled in and stuck up in there i got this is the other outlet that goes off the 2500 watt inverter these are all cabinets where the wife puts you can put whatever you want in there she chooses to put dishes in there on this side over here she says everything else box goods a little bit of bread pretzels this sink came out of the the um pop-up trailer the sink did this came from the same guy but it was for a um a slop sink he had in his basement he was throwing away so i, I took it out and this you can take it so i figured we don't have a shower in here and i figured we could take it out turn it on we could stand out there and shower or at least rinse off that kind of thing underneath we have right now we just have um six gallon containers i got these from walmart i have one labeled for waste or bad uh water and i have two for clean so i'm gonna i make sure the bad one is empty and only fill this one up with like five gallons so when this goes empty i know the bad won't be overflowing into my trailer and then i take it and dump it in the toilet or wherever you want to go so back to this side over here we have a, a wardrobe i had to put a mirror in here this is just a cheap walmart mirror i cut down to fit just sand the edges so it wasn't sharp and you, this it gives her just enough light where she can put on her makeup she loves her hanging clothes so she puts all there and then what's underneath it just purses and just miscellaneous things like that so and then we have a i guess you could say a composting toilet but bob wells just poop in the bucket so we keep it under here and a five gallon bucket wouldn't fit but we found a a smaller bucket that would fit in and we just i just right now we're just using like hamster uh or any kind of animal cedar chips that keep the, the smell down until we're ready to go and we just double bag it and like he said if it's good enough for babies poo and dog poo it's good enough for humans and there's just more storage underneath here just let me keep a fire extinguisher i usually get it out some paperwork i haven't we're still work in progress i haven't figured everything out just yet but um they just put back on and we got more storage underneath this side as well once you take the air conditioner out you can kind of get back in there to it going to the outside again like i said we used to carry motorcycles and mowers in here to this back door eventually i think i want to put like garage floor paint like the speckle paint on it uh, pop-up trailer we had i took the tank out as well and i brought the tube back up and this is the fill we fill it right here um for that i was going to put it on the outside but i wasn't sure if you get a couple of jokers and they might put something goofy in there so I, I let the fill be on the inside of the house and a couple little ant traps just because i can never keep them out of it of course now these are um stabilizing jacks that i had bought and put on there because when you put the mowers and stuff if you didn't have a hook to a truck the trailer would want to tip and then for the another side benefit is it makes it more stable when you're in here camping so i set these and then i jack up the tongue and it's kind of like a three like three points so you don't get like a rock and you know it just takes the weight off the axles and just makes it more stable up top i have um three 327 watt solar panels which is more than my solar controllers can handle but they don't tilt so maybe a couple months out of the year when the sun's directly above it probably makes more than they can handle but any other time is probably i'm not making as much as they can handle if that makes any sense underneath this is the tank that i took out of the um pop-up trailer 
And then I stuck a heating element here that hopefully I can figure out how to, when its batteries get full, that I can dump the extra wattage into this heating element and at least maybe warm the water up so that it's not cold on our hands when we're doing the dishes to help clean them. This is the fill, fill line, breather line. This extension cord, I have inside a power strip. So when we're camping at a campsite and they have power, I just plug into that for, we had a, um, rather than run my propane heater, I uh, plug in that and then we have a little oil filled heater and doesn't make any noise and might not use if it's you're buying a camps or rent a campsite you just use their power this window is an emergency egress window from the inside the air conditioner that will pop all the way up this i got from leftover it's just a piece of aluminum that was for a door at one of my jobs this is the exhaust for the the um heater inside the propane heater so i'm i the this was on the inside of the spare tire. I mounted it underneath the here, um, just trying to keep spreading my weight. I, I bought a, uh, this propane holder from Amazon, holds two 20 gallon propane tanks. The weight distribution hitch is Harbor Freight. Um, I set it up myself between the truck and the, and the trailer, um, and it seems to do a pretty good job. I can't, I can't complain about it. Just follow directions like anything else, and. It worked out pretty good. These these brackets here, right here, I made these, um, and, and this is just some one by two steel, and I, I made these brackets and welded them up with a Harbor Freight welder. And this is two by four I milled down to make it like a two by three that goes across. And I lag bolted it all the way through and then come up as well. And then I've got, you can see the brackets I've got attached to the panels, and I've got them also brackets um, in between. So they're not going to go anywhere and the reason it's up a little higher than that flat with the roof is i wanted it to be above when i open up that max air fan vent that it doesn't touch so that's why they're up as high as they do and i haven't had any problem with them vibrating in the wind or anything that I, at least that i know of anyway thank you very much for taking the time to give us an impromptu tour today of your cargo trailer conversion i was driving through the campground i seen it I was like, I gotta go out and meet this guy because I've never seen anything like this. I know there's people out there that build these, um, but I never got to see one in person. Is there any tips that you could give our viewers if they wanted to go out and buy one of these cargo trailers and build out one themselves? Yeah, um, of course they make them in all different sizes from like probably a four by eight to five by eight, five by 10, six. This one happens to be a seven by 12, but it actually measures like six, eight, I think 11, six. And everything's a trade-off that you that you have. The the bigger you get, the more room you have. Um, this one was, I bought this one because this was the latest one I could find in this size, so I could put um, more weight in. I think I can carry 2,000 pounds. That's why I built a lot of stuff. Is like these um, counters are just hollow core doors. So I tried to make it as light as I could. And I actually towed this before all this with a, a minivan, and we got in. And we were coming down a mountain one time, and it didn't want to stop. It didn't come with electric brakes. I put electric brakes on when we got back from that trip. Um, it scared me to death. <laughs> when you push your pedal down and, and there's no brakes there. So we put electric brakes on it. But again, it, it, the bigger you get, the more stuff you can uh, have. The smaller you get, a lighter weight, better probably fuel mileage and, and that kind of thing. But you deal with less space inside. So it's gonna be the wife and I are gonna be traveling. So I had to get something. Well, we had this, so we used this is what we did. We didn't buy like a toy hauler or something like that because you know, they're 15, 20, depends on what you want again, the, you know. It, and I had the, the knowledge to do this and I had the trailer. And as I come across things, I would get, the, like I said, I got that pop-up um, trailer for, for nothing. And I used a lot of the parts from that. So really it, it's your ability um what you have on hand if you've got the money go buy top of the line if you don't you can you can you can do things like this and i like one of the things that really impressed me of the overall aesthetics and the design and the style that you still left it so you could put a motorcycle inside if you really wanted to with the murphy bed idea did that add a lot of time and challenges to the conversion it it, it did i had to, in fact like that that window arm you see right there it used to flip on that side well i had to take it off and go this side so that the Murphy bed could come down and wouldn't hit it. And you used to see when I, I would 
template things up. I would figure out a four by eight and knew my, my hinge point and I would take a, a piece of wood four foot and I took a pencil on it and I, and I scribed down so I knew where it was going to be and it would and it would just miss if I put it on that side. And I lucked, you know, you say you luck out, but I lucked out on a lot of things the way they, they laid out and the way they, they came together. Um, you, you figure out what you, you need first. Like I got the mattress size and then I built the Murphy bed and all that to the mattress size that was big enough for me and the wife to not kill each other, you know, elbowing each other in the middle of the night. So you, you have to figure out what you need and then you like reverse engineer, I guess you would say, fr from there. And then, so that will dictate the size of cabinets I have and, and just things like that. And I knew I need counter space or we need counter space. And even our big RVs hardly have any kitchen counter space. And I was like, I need some place to sit my phone and your keys and, you know, and just stuff like that. So that's why we have like two counters. Some people say it encloses it, but I just open up the back door it opens it right back up. So yeah, and I never seen anything like a Murphy bed with a dinette table that folds out the bottom. That really is a space saver, really opens up the back of the trailer because you're not eating and you're not sleeping all day long. Correct. Exactly right. Yes. So and, and, and it's like anything else. It's not a dedicated bedroom, but we, we're, you know, we're, we're 11 or 12 foot long. We're not 24 feet long. So we can get anywhere we want to go. I can make a U-turn easy. Um, so that kind of, it takes us, you know, maybe, you know, three minutes longer to make the bed. Well, you, you saw me make the, you know, it takes me longer to put the sheet on it than it does to, to lower, lower it down and put it back up. Um, but everything's a trade-off and it's all, you know, what you have on hand and so. Well, how long does it take to convert one of these part-time? It, it, um, it depends like anything else. So I would hit it hard for a couple of weeks and then I'd, I'm not gonna say I'd lose interest, but you know, life happens. You you, you get tied up. Our, our son was in in school and we, we were on the golf team. So we, that was a couple of nights a week. So, you know, th there were in a couple months that I, I didn't work on it. And I hit it hard again for a couple of weeks kind of things. I probably got, um, cause all the doors and everything, I, I had to cut all those up myself and stain them and glue them together. And I probably got close to six months, I guess um in, in building it something like that yeah, i know the cabins could take a long time it's not like you just could go to a home center and buy the same yeah ones no everything's custom you know because you i mean you could buy i mean you could excuse me you could get a, a cabinet but that's not a four foot cabinet you know or a third a step you might be you know 42 inches or 40 you know 51 inches or something like that you're going to build to maximize your space i don't want to have a three inch gap any place so I, I built everything so that it would fit well, what we have. now it's done and it's beautiful. I really appreciate you taking the time today. Well, this is Patrick with New Jersey's Outdoor Adventures YouTube channel. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like this video, comment, share, subscribe. I'd love it. And we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.